الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين له بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to reflect on Sakaratul Mawt, the agony of death. And inshallah ta'ala, I want us to take lessons from that. My beloved brothers and sisters, if there was nothing else, if there was no other pain, if there was no other hardship, no other suffering, that we went through other than Sakaratul Maut, that alone itself would be something to be scared of. If there was no other pain that we were put through, we did not go through the trials and tribulations of this earth. The only thing that we were put through was Sakaratul Maut. That alone itself is enough for you to be worried and scared. How painful it is and how severe it is. Luqman said to his son, he said to his son, Ya Bunaya, my son, Amrun a mata la tedri, you don't know, mata yalqaka when it's going to come your way. A mata which you're not aware of when it's going to happen. He started, Lahu, prepare for it. Before it suddenly comes and it befalls you. Think about it today. If you knew today, whilst you were enjoying yourself, that there's going to come an individual who's going to put you through a lot of pain. He's going to make you suffer. And it can happen anytime. That individual can just walk in and he could put you through pain any second, any minute. You never know. How would you feel? It would really tighten your life and everything around you. You feel pain, you feel... Can I enjoy this cup of water I'm drinking? You would be scared. Because you're expecting that any minute this person can come in and, 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 and put me through torture and pain. Death is like that. It can come any time, any minute it can come to you. And when it does come, it will put you through a lot of pain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, He says, وَلَوْ تَرَى If you see, when the oppressors and the wrongdoers are in when they are in the agony of death and the angels and the angels have spread their hands meaning their wings into the individual and then they say to them bring out your own nafs Allah is telling us here in this verse that those who have gone against Allah's command, those who have exceeded their limits in transgression and wrongdoing, they were committing crimes, they were told to stay away from the things that they were told to stay away from, and they chose not to listen. Allah is telling us about their situation, last moments of their, of their life. Allah says to us, وَلَوْ تَرَى أَوْ Muhammad, if only you saw, الظالمون, the transgressors, the criminals, the wrongdoers. في غمرات الموت. Allah refers to, refers to it as what? غمرات. غمرات means something that covers a person until the person loses his what? His mind. And that's what death does to the person. سكرات. And the agony. The person's mind goes. In another ayah Allah says, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ Allah says, وَجَاءَتْ It has come. Finally. سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ The agony of death has finally come. You used to be told about death. You were told that one day you're going to die. You were told that your life is going to finish. It has finally come. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ Now it has come. It's a reality. You're looking at it with your own eyes. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ It has truly come. 
It's not something you can deny. It's a reality that has manifested in front of you. Dalika, this death that you're looking at in the eyes right now, it used to be ma kunta minhu tahid, something you used to want to turn away from, something that you used to try to divert from. You didn't want its mention. Because the, the reality of it is that ma dukir al maut, death is not mentioned. In a place where people are enjoying themselves Nobody brings the information And the reality of death Into the discussion Except that the discussion becomes sad And people become So people don't like it It takes away, it takes away the joy It takes away the happiness When the person sits down And they think about death And that they know that they can leave their children behind And they become worried about these children Who are going to look after them and they know that they're going to leave their possession, their worldly possession, their money, their car, their wife, their children, all behind. They start to become worried. So people avoid it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't discuss it. I remember one time, there was a non-Muslim I, had a, I was having a dialogue with. I was conversing with him. And I told him about the concept of what? Of death. I said, what do you think that's going to happen on the other side? And he said something to me. He said, I don't want to think about it and don't bring it up to me. I don't want you to talk to me about it and I don't want to think about it. I don't want it to come to my mind. The, the painful reality is that he could try to avoid it. He could choose to not talk about it and not discuss it. But will that change its occurrence? Will that stop it in any way, form or shape? No. The time that it's written, it will come. Allah says to us in another ayah, That when the nafs reaches the hulqum, the collarbone, and you all, each and every one of you, When the soul reaches the collarbone, and you're looking at it, This is called tanwin al which means that every single thing that pain of agony comes with, you'll be looking at it. And the nafs being taken out of your body, you're also going to be looking at it. And we are more closer to you than it. But you can't see. Your eyesight can't catch it. So the Mahalu Shahid of the ayah is This is the reality that every single person is going to go through. Just the past Friday, you guys have heard of a young Somalian kid who died in West London. And who got stabbed, they stabbed each other, or, or shot each other, broad daylight. A group of Somalis, two groups, they shot one, shot one another at each other. So one of the kids, he died in broad daylight, in a very busy area. The boy was brought to the masjid. He was brought to the masjid on Friday. Salatu uh, al-Janazah was prayed on him. And his friends, they came, a large amount. The people who were with him on the streets, they all came. So I reminded them of this reality that's going to come. But this is something that each and every one of us, you know this cup of death, the way I perceive it is, it's like a long road, it's a long line, a line. If you guys go to a restaurant, you go into a line, right? If you're ordering something. Or if you're going to a chicken and chip shop, you go into a line. Death is like that, it's a line, we're all in that line. Just one person is getting dealt with, he dies, and then the next one comes, and then the next person comes, and then the next person comes. Just because somebody has preceded you in it, it's what? It doesn't mean that you're not going to die. And when it does come, it comes with what Allah said, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ It comes with agony and pain. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He draws the agony of death even more to us. He says, كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِي When the nafs reaches the collarbone, وَقِيلَ مَا الرَّاقِ And the people say, where is the raqi? The doctor. They're looking for the doctor. Where's the doctor? 
to cure this person, but the nafs has reached the collarbone. وَظَلَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقِ وَظَلَّهِيَا It's not what many people think it means. It doesn't mean assumes. It means he knows. It's yaqeen and certainty. And the word ظَلَّ in the Quran sometimes is used as something that is certain. As Nabi Allah Yusuf, what did Allah say? وَقَالَ لِلَّذِي ظَلَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجِلْ Yusuf knew this one was going to make it through. So here, the raq, they're looking for the doctor. This person is about to die. He's sakarati maut. The death is about to leave him. And the people are saying, where is the doctor? Where is the do- doctor? But the individual who's dying has come to the certainty that he's not going to live. وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ saq, And his two legs, they have come together. When the person dies, their body parts are brought together. He's come together now. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمَسَاقِ and the place that he's heading towards is Allah. The naf has left his body. His body is now being tucked in. And the place that he's going towards is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the what? The sakaratul mawt. Al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated bisanadihi an Aisha with his chain of narration from our mother Aisha. أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كانت بين يديه ركوة أو علبة. The our messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم in front of him was a ركوة. A ركوة is it's a leather container that has water in it. أو علبة. علبة is a wooden container. It was in front of the messenger. فيها ماء. Water was inside it. It was either a leather container or a wooden container. Inside it was water. فَجَعَلَ يُدْخِلُ يَدَيْهِ The Prophet started to put his hands inside the water. فَيَمْسَحُ بِهَا وَجْهَهُ And the Prophet would wipe the water over his face. وَيَقُولُ And he would say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ إِنَّ لِلْمَوْتِ سَكَرَاتِ The Prophet would say that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Verily, death has agony, it has pain. Inna lil mawti sakarat. Thumma nasaba yadahu. Then the Prophet, he pointed his finger. Faja'ala yaqul. He stuck his finger up like that. And he started to say, Fi rafiq al a'la. The high above. I want to be in the high supreme. Hatta qubida wa malat yaduhu. Until his nafs, nafs got taken out of him. And the hand of the Prophet Asam dropped. So the Prophet sallallahu the heat that was coming out of his face and the temperature growing, the Prophet was placing his hand inside the water and then he would take his hands out and he would wipe it over his face. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi would say, Inna lil mawti verily death has sakarat, it has pain. Umar radiallahu anhu mentioned something very powerful. He said that the believer, when the death comes to him, if his righteous deeds have not reached a good level, it hasn't. And Allah wants to take him higher. Just before he leaves this dunya, Allah increases him in pain in the sakaratul maut. It's multiplied for him, it's extra. So that extra pain is put through the believer, so he what? So he receives a high station with Allah. So the Prophet وسلم, when they came to him and they said, Ya Rasulullah, you are going through pain, you're suffering. And the Prophet said, Naam, inni I, Nabi Muhammad, I go through the agony of the pain like two of you men would go through it. I mean, I'm given the pain of two individuals. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ مُسْلِمْ أَمْ بُخَارِ Both narrated, Bukhari and Muslim both narrated لَمَّا ثَقُلَ When the Prophet became heavy Here heavy means his body parts became weak That he was, the, the, the pressure that was on him was very heavy عليه الصلاة والسلام جَعَلَ يَتَغَشَّى The Prophet kept on fainting He kept on what? He kept fainting, he would lose his consciousness عليه الصلاة والسلام 
فقالت او مضى اما او the prophet's daughter Fatima رضي الله تعالى عنها she would say wa karb aba distress is on my father my father is truly distressed فقال the prophet said to his daughter Fatima ليس على أبيك أبيك there is no longer upon your father كرب distress بعد اليوم after today whatever pain that I endure today it will be the last time I suffer after today I will not suffer again Fatima would say وكرب أباه she sees what her father is going through she sees his situation the heat the pain how the Prophet's facial color changed, how he couldn't speak, how he kept fainting. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And when she said that, the Prophet looked at her and he said to her, Laysa ala abiki, there is not on your father anymore. Karbun ba'd al After today onwards, your father will never be distressed again. Falamma mata when the Prophet died. قالت فاطمة said يا أبتا my father أجاب ربا دعا he accepted the call of his lord he obeyed his lord my father نبي الله محمد when he was commanded by Allah he submitted and he followed يا أبتا my father من جنة الفردوس مأوى somebody who Jannah is his final abode. That's where he's finally going to go. Ya Abata, my father, ila Jibreel an an'a. We can, to Jibreel we convey the death of the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the fact that we're losing him. We're going to tell it to Jibreel. Falamma lufina, when the Prophet was buried and he was put in his grave, qalat Fatima to Fatima said, Ya Anas, Fatima came walking to Anas and she said, Ya Anas, Anas, Atabat Nufusukum. Did your souls give you guys the ability and tahtu ala Rasulullah that you throw sand over the Prophet's face, that you pour sand over him? How did your nafs give you guys that? When the Prophet was alive, they would not let a fly land on his body. The companions they would defend him and you guys know the famous hadith of Sulh al Hudaybiyah, the treaty of Hudaybiyah when Urwat ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi came and he was speaking on behalf of Quraysh and he came and sat in front of the Prophet and Urwat ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi he would always want to touch a Prophet's beard. So this was the Arab's culture. That when they spoke to somebody, they would touch their beard. Mughira ibn Shu'bah, he was standing on top of the Prophet. He's wearing his armor. He's got his sword up with him. Whenever Urwat ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi wants to touch the Prophet's beard, he takes the sword and he smacks it on the hand of Urwah. Ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi as in don't touch the Prophet. So Urwa kept talking and then when he wants to go to the Prophet's bin, he gets hit again. And he gets hit again. And finally he said to him, who is this individual? Because he can't see. Because M- Mughira is wearing a what? He's wearing an armor. So he can't see his face. Who said, he said, who is this person hurting me? And then he, they told him this is Mughira. Within the narration it mentions that Urwa ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi he went back to Quraysh. This was in Hudaybiyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah before it happened. He went back to Quraysh to convey to them what he had dealt with the Prophet, what he saw from him. He said to Quraysh, you guys have sent me off before to other leaders, other people. I went to the leader, the Roman leader, the Persian leader. I visited them. And each and every one of them, I set, I saw their settings and I saw how the people dealt with them. Like in, I never saw a people who honor their leader 
the way that the companions of Muhammad honor Muhammad. I never saw that. They said that Urwa carried on speaking. He said, The Prophet does not spit a what? A spit. And he doesn't spit, alayhi salatu salam. Except there's a person waiting for his spit. It will fall on his palm and he would wipe on his face. The Prophet does not do wudu except the water that drops from his hands and his palm and his body parts. There are people who are doing wudu under it. Who are using that water to drink and to also what? To use it as wudu, tabarruq, to find barakah from it. And it's permissible for the Prophet alone. No one after that can it be done for. So now they're seeing somebody who they used to do this for. But the reality has brought them to, to have to take sand and to pour it over him alayhi salatu salam. Why? Ittiba'an li sunnati. They're following his sunnah. He's the one who told them to do this. Are we all together, brothers? This is a reality. If somebody could get away from, our Prophet would have, would have alayhi salatu salam. And he would have escaped from this. But the reality is that everybody will go through it. Aisha said, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, Bukhari narrated this. She said, Ma tan nabiyu, the Prophet died. Wa innahu labayna haqilati wa daqilati. She said that the Prophet died and he was between my chin and my chest. That's where the Prophet died. He was on my chest lying. And she said, Fala akrahu shiddatan. I do not dislike a pain of death, I mean, the agony of death for anyone. I do not like the agony of death for anyone after what I saw the Prophet go through. Alayhi salatu salam. In another word, she said, Ma aghbitu ahadan bihawni mawtin. بعد الذي رأيت من شدة موت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet would, whenever he woke up and he regained consciousness, he would consistently say this dua: اللهم أو الله أعني help me aid me أو الله help me support me على سكرات الموت help me and aid me with the agony of death and the pain that it holds. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is what we're all going to go through. It's a reality that awaits us, each and every one of us. We all wait for what? That agony and that pain. وَلِذَلِكَ عُمَرَ بْنُ الْخَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ One day, he said to Ka'b al-Ahbar, he said to him, he requested from him, to tell him about hadithna al maut tell us about death. Umar was a, the biggest Muslim leader of his time. He said to Ka'b al-Ahbar, tell us about death. Ka'b said to him, Na'am ya amir al muminin Yes, the leader of the believers. And then he said to him, death is a thorn that has large prickles that come out of it. Udkhira fi jawfi rajuli that is put inside a person. And this, the prickle on the thorn, it drags onto every single vein in every part of your body. Thumma jabadahu and then it is dragged by the strongest person there is who is dragging that inside you. That thorn will take with it what it can. It will take with it what it can and it will let loose what it can. But it will, it will destroy you inside. That pain when the nafs is leaving your body, it's something that every body of every part of your body will feel. Your nails will feel the pain. Every part of your body 
will feel it. Umar then when he heard that, and Ka'ab al-Ahbar said that to him, he said, لو كان لي, if I only had طلاع الأرض ذهبا, if I had this whole earth full of gold, لفتديت بها, I would have freed myself from this pain by paying this, this money. I would get myself out of this. If I had gold of this earth, I would do that. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, one day he came to visit ala maridh ya'udu. He came to a sick person who was ill. فَوَجَدَهُ when Hassan al-Basri entered, he saw the individual who, who he came to visit fi sakarati al-mawt. He was on the agony of death, pain, suffering, sweating. And then what he said was فَنَظَرَ إِلَى إِلَيْهِ Hassan al-Basri looked at him, observed him. And he saw the pain and the shidda that came down on this individual. فَرَجَعَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ He came back to his family running. بِغَيْرِ اللَّوْنِ الَّذِي خَرَجَ مِنْ عِنْدِهِمْ He came back with his facial, the complexion of his face changed from what it was before. And he said to, the, and they said to him, we've got food ready for you to eat. And then he said to his family, عَلَيْكُمْ بِطَعَامِكُمْ You guys have your food. And you guys have your drink. It's for you guys. Have it yourselves. فَوَاللَّهِ by Allah, لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ I saw an image, a reality. لَا أَزَالُ أَعْمَلُ لَهُ حَتَّى أَلْقَى اللَّهُ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى I saw what I had saw, which has now made me, inshallah, consistent in working hard until I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the why statement of the scholars is as Sa'id, the successful person, the smart person, is man The smart person is the one who takes a lesson in others. He doesn't have to be put through it. When he sees people going through the agony of pain, the death, and when he sees other people dying, and when he sees other people suffering, it becomes a good lesson for him. He wakes up, and as they say, he smells the coffee, and he knows what waits for him. So as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there's no way running out of this, brothers. And Sakaratu Mawt awaits each and every one of us. And death is going to come to us in that way and in that form that I mentioned. Now you have a question that you need to ask yourself. When it comes, have I got anything ready? Have I prepared? Have I stacked up? Have I made sure that when that I pass that transition and I go on the other side, is my pain still going to carry on of the suffering I'm going to go through? Or is this world going to be my final suffering? Alhamdulillah, what waits for me is Jannah. You need to ask yourself that question. Because what did the Prophet say to his daughter Fatima? Laysa ala abiki karbun ba'd al After today, your father is not going to stress. Your father is not go- going to go through any pain after this. You need to ask yourself, are you like that? Are you going to... Is, is uh, agony of death, sakaratul maut, is it going to be the beginning of your stress? Is it going to be the beginning of your problems? Or is it inshallah ta'ala going to be the end of your hardship and the suffering that you went through? Brothers, wake up. No one's able to help you, Wallahi. No one has helped you in this world to take righteous deeds for you. No one can pray for you in this world. You have to pray for yourself. And at the day of judgment, you're alone. That's the truth. You're alone. You're by yourself. Your mom is going to leave you. Your children are going to walk away from you. Allah says to us in the Quran, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِنِي شَأْنُ يُغْنِيهِ there's nothing anyone can do for you. Nabi Allah Muhammad can't do nothing for his own mom. 
When did he say alayhi salatu wa salam, Istadantu Rabbi an azura qabra ummi. I took permission from Allah if I can go and visit my mother's grave. Fadi nali, Allah allowed it to me. He said, go Muhammad, go visit your mother's grave. And then he said, Fastadantu Rabbi, I then took permission from Allah again. And astaghfir Allah if I can ask forgiveness for my mother. Falam yadani, Allah did not let me. So Nabi Allah Muhammad is being said to you, you can't ask forgiveness for your mother. And so he cried alayhi salatu salam. He cried until the tears that came out of the Prophet's eyes alayhi salatu salam, it filled his beard. Alayhi salatu salam. This is who? Khalilullah. This is the best from the children of Adam. And he can't help his own mother from entering the hellfire. Same with Nabi Allah Ibrahim. Nabi Allah Ibrahim, he advised his father. He spoke to what? He spoke to his father. And what did he say to his father? Ya Abati, my father. قَدْ جَعَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكَ فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ سِرَاطًا سَوِيًا Father, guidance has come to me. I know what you don't know. Follow me, and inshallah I'll take you upon a good path. Ya Abati, my father. My father, I am scared that the punishment is going to come to you and it's going to touch you and it's going to destroy you. And then you will become the allies of Shaytan. Ya Abati, la ta'abudu Shaytan. Inna Shaytan kana lil Rahmani asiyya. Ibrahim is opening his heart to his father. My son. My father, sorry. My father, my father. Did his father listen to him? Did his, did his father take that advice? No. The day of judgment, his father, Azara, is going to come to Nabi Allah Ibrahim. Azara is going to come. And when Azara comes, he's going to grab Ibrahim and he's going to say to him, My son, today I will not disobey you. Today I'm not going to disobey you. Today tell me what to do and I will follow you, my son. Ibrahim will say, but I advised you when you were in the world. He said, no, today, and I, I promise I will listen. I will listen to you, but if you tell me, I will do it. Ibrahim turns to Allah and he says, oh Allah, you promised me that you're not going to what? That you're not going to give me any suffering in the hereafter. That's what you promised me, oh Allah. And what is more greater in suffering than seeing my father in the situation that he's in? <coughs> Ibrahim's father, when he came, the narration mentions that his father's face was dusted and it was dark and black. You know why, brothers? It's a reflection of the pain that's in the heart of Azar. Ibrahim's father, he's suffering the depression and the pain that he's going through. It's reflecting on his face. So he's trying to stretch out to his son, help me today, Father, help me. Imagine your father the day of judgment, grabbing you and saying, help me today. That's your dad. It hurts. Ibrahim turns to Allah and he begs Allah, help, oh Allah, help me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have made Jannah haram from the disbelievers. Kafir will not enter Jannah. This is impossible, it won't happen. The Qadr is written. Ibrahim, this is something that's destined. You can't do anything about it. And when Ibrahim turns to look back at his father, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deforms his father and he turns his father into a wild dog. A wild dog who's got on him blood and feces. And the reason why this is done to his father is so Ibrahim doesn't have any compassion and any tie with his father anymore. He, do, would, he wouldn't like a wild dog, right? That's got blood on it and feces on it. So no one can help you if Khalilay, Ibrahim can't help his own father. Nabiullah Muhammad can't help his own two parents. You are alone. And the smart, Al-Kayyisul Aqil, Ya Ikhwan, the smart, clever individual is the one who prepares for the Sakaratul Mawt. He's ready. 
that when he comes, when he knocks on his door, when he visits him, he's willing, inshallah ta'ala, to be on the other side. Let today be a moment where you change. You change for the better. You take a, a step in your life where you're, you say, I have been given chances, not chance. Allah is very merciful. Look. Allah says in the Quran, If Allah was to grab the people, every single time that they did a sin, Allah grabbed them, destroyed them. Would, would there be anybody on the face of this earth? No. Allah has allowed you to live. Allah has given you an opportunity to carry on in life. So many brothers and sisters, Allah blessed them. Allah gave them so much. And they know they are committing so much sins. Allah gave them a good job. Allah gave them a good car. Allah gave them a good marriage, good children. But they, are, they know that they are dwelling inside sins. Remember that you might fall under the ayah. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتًا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ That whenever they forgot themselves, like you're committing a sin and you're getting good, you thought to yourself, okay, you know what? I'm actually not a bad person. So you start going more into the sins. Allah is going to grab you and grab it where you will not get out of His hands. Subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy you. Allah is letting you enjoy yourself. So be smart and be clever. Wallahi brothers, if somebody invited you to their house today and they gave you food and they gave you clothing and they gave you money, what they deserve from you is respect, honoring, veneration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this health. Allah has given you this mind and Allah has given you provision and He runs your affairs and you've chosen to eat His rizq to disobey Him. How ungrateful can you be? You're eating what He gave you. You're breathing the atmosphere that He's given you in disobeying Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. How dark and dull and black is your heart and how evil are you? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today that we live in this world may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who remember him and may Allah make us those who hear the good speech that was mentioned and they follow the good from it anything which I have said any mistakes, faults, errors shortcoming in my speech is from me as shaytan and Allah and his message are free from it subhanak Allahumma bihamdik أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. The purpose of this lecture is not for it to be too long. It's not an hour or anything. It's reflections. Thirty minutes to forty-five maximum. But it's meant to be ما قل that which is small, but it goes far into the mind and it sinks in. بارك الله فيكم فليسني ورزقكم الله خيرا.